Can you run an oversized caliber break on your rifle? Of course you can. Should you run an oversized caliber break on your rifle? What will happen? Will you lose performance? We're gonna look at that in depth with our Ultimate Reloader recoil rig in this video with not only bolt action, but also the AR platform. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Here at Ultimate Reloader, we love to get hands on with scientific data. And that's just what we're gonna do in this story. This is not our first foray into testing bullet clearance through a break. And we'll tie in some other learnings that we've had previously at the end of the video. Before we jump into any of the testing, let's talk about what muzzle brake clearance is. Well, there's two key factors. There's the bore of the muzzle brake. And what we're using is the smallest diameter portion of the interior of the brake through which the bullet passes as the bore value for the brake. Then of course you've got bullet diameter. So if you take the brake bore diameter and subtract the bullet diameter, you have essentially what the air gap is all the way around the bullet as it passes through the brake. This of course assumes no carbon buildup. So what does clearance possibly affect? Caliber compatibility. If you're using a 308 brake, you're also going to be able to use that on smaller calibers, just like with a suppressor. You could run it with a 6.5, you could run it with a 223, which is what our testing will cover. Should you, what will happen? Of course, that's what we're talking about here. It will also affect how the recoil dynamics unfold how much recoil reduction you'll get over the impulse and how peak forces are reduced. Clearance does affect that. How much, we'll get into that. And then also we have precision and accuracy. How does it affect precision, which is your group size? How does it affect accuracy, which is essentially the POI shift? That's for another time. <laughs> okay, so the test is, we're gonna take Apollo Max brakes from Ultradyne. We have the 223556, we have the 65264, and we have the 762308 versions of the brake. And we've got two 22 caliber rifles, a 22250 that's a bolt action, and a 223 Remington that's an AR-15. We're gonna run these brakes through our recoil rig on both of these rifles and see what happens. A little bit about the Ultimate Reloader recoil rig. This was based on a design that Calzant over at the Precision Rifle blog published. We've made it our own. We've welded up a steel frame. We've written custom software. This recoil rig is really cool because it can measure and capture force readings in pounds at 20,000 force readings per second. And what that does is it gives us a nice smooth plot of recoil. We can tell a lot about what's happening. Peak forces, total impulse, any kind of resonance and vibration. It all shows up on the graphs. So the brakes tested in this story, uh, let's dig into that a little bit. We've got the Apollo Max 223556. The bore diameter, I used pin gauges on all of this to figure out what these bore diameters are. The smallest portion of the interior bore through which the bullet passes. For the Apollo Max 223556, the bore diameter was measured at 0.270 inches. So for a 223 bullet, which measures 224 inches, 0.224, we've got 46 thousandths of an inch clearance. Okay, stepping up to the Apollo Max 264, 6.5 caliber break. I measured the bore diameter at 0.318 inches. So for a 6.5 projectile, 0.264 inches, we've got 54 thousandths of an inch clearance. Finally, stepping up to the Apollo Max 308762, I measured the bore diameter at 0.366 inches. So for an appropriate caliber bullet for that break from, for which it was designed, we've got 58 thousandths of an inch clearance. Okay, let's talk about what these clearance values are for this test. Now we're switching from the yellow highlight to the blue highlight. For 22 caliber bullets with the 223 break, we've got again, 46 thousandths of an inch clearance. For the 6.5 millimeter break, we've got 94 thousandths of an inch. And for the 308, 30 caliber, break, we've got 142 thousandths inch clearance for that 22 caliber projectile. I bet you're wondering right now what's going to happen, right? You're probably predicting 
in your mind how this will unfold. You are like me. <laughs> okay, a little bit more about the 22-250 test rifle. We've done a bunch of things on the channel. I chambered the barrel on the channel. Uh, we did a Boyd's stock upgrade, this Pro Varmint stock. And the test ammunition for all the 22-250 testing was a Hornady 52 grain hollow point boat tail bullet and the classic load of 38 grains of Hodgson H380 behind it. In fact, that's where that name comes from, is 38 grains for a 22250 behind an approximately 55 grain projectile. Okay, so the testing. We ran uh, bare muzzle, then 22 cal break, then 65 cal break, and then 30 cal break, and captured the data, ran it through our custom software, lined it all up, and did graphs of it to see how all this was going to compare. You want to see what that looks like? It looks like this. So the black line, that high peak line, is what happened with a bare muzzle. And then as we look at all of the lower traces, we've got the 223 cal break in green, we've got the 65 cal break in blue, and then we've got the 30 cal break in red. Interestingly, this is exactly what I had predicted would happen the last time that we did this kind of testing, but this more clearly illustrates the effect. With optimized clearance, we've got the lowest recoil. With a little bit more clearance, we've got a little bit more recoil. And with a lot of clearance, we've got more recoil yet. You can see how all these lines line up so precisely. The data repeatability from the recoil rig is pretty exceptional, really. So while there is incrementally more recoil going from 22 cal to 65 cal to 30 cal, the difference net is really not that much. Are you gonna be able to feel repeatably the difference between the green line, the blue line, and the red line? Possibly, probably not. Will it affect your view through the scope? The sight picture. Are you going to be able to see your trace? Are you going to be able to see your hits and misses that much less stepping up to a 6.5 cal break or stepping up to a 30 cal break? I think you can look at the data and say there will be a difference, but the difference is pretty small. Let's talk peak force. Again, here with a bar chart, you can see we have incrementally more peak force going from 223 to 6.5 to 308. And then for the bare muzzle, the number shoots way, way up. Okay, let's talk impulse. So impulse is merely the area under the curve. It's kind of the summation of the entire recoil event. We see a similar graph here, but the differences are even smaller when you look at the entire time duration of the recoil event. 223, 65, and 308, basically the same. And then again, when you jump up to the bare muzzle, it goes way, way up. So, the bolt action results are kind of the simple and straightforward results. Let's move over to the AR-15. This AR-15 is based on an aero precision lower. It's got a 5.56 upper. It's a 16 inch barrel, if I remember correctly. It's pretty much your classic AR. Now we did go with a little bit of a heavier projectile. We're not running a 55 grain FMJ here. This is Berger 73 grain hollow point boat tail factory ammunition. And uh, this AR has run really, really reliable and I kind of feel like it represents a really good middle of the road for a 22 caliber AR-15 type rifle. Before we get into all of the data, I wanna talk about the entire cycle of operation as represented via recoil for the AR-15. There is a lot more going on here. Here's an example trace from our testing. Number one is the initial recoil impulse. This is literally the bullet moving down the barrel and then after it exits the barrel, that kind of initial entire recoil event. And as you can see here, it spikes way, way up and it comes right down really quickly. This is about three thousandths of a second, maybe four thousandths of a second total width there on the graph, very, very quick event. After this, as the bolt carrier group is moving back, you see just a little bit of friction there on the graph. 
Number two here is the bolt carrier group and buffer bottoming out at the rearward most portion of its travel. And what it does is it slams, and you can see a slam there. The slam is longer uh, in time duration, but has a much shorter uh, representation on the graph, and that means less peak forces. After it bottoms out at the back, it's gonna go through its entire travel forward more slowly, because remember, this is just a spring pushing it forward. It's not all those explosive gases pushing it back. And then finally, we see another event there, number three on this graph, which is the bolt carrier group slamming to the front, lugs locking, ready to fire again. And this is very repeatable. I actually looked at a PCC that we had, and it was pretty similar, the overall timing of the whole thing, even though that was a, a separate type of bolt design uh, and everything. So it's kind of interesting that this stuff repeats so consistently. Okay, so again, we took the AR-15, we shot it with the bare muzzle, we shot it with the 22 cal Apollo Max, we shot it with the 65 caliber Apollo Max, and then the 308 uh, cal Apollo Max. And here is what we saw. Now, I'm not showing all three events because I don't think we really care about the lugs locking in that fin final slam forward event. So let's take a look at events number one, which is the initial recoil impulse, and then number two, which is uh, the bottoming out at the back. So you can see here that the black line, which is the bare muzzle, definitely represents the most recoil. And then from this graph, it's a little bit hard to see what's happening uh, at this level. So we're gonna zoom in on number one here. And this is what we see. Kind of an interesting and pretty repeatable event in terms of where the peaks are on the graph. If you made vertical lines through those little humps, they're very consistent. And this could be lugs unlocking, that, that kind of thing, all captured in this uh, event. So this is a little bit less clear compared to the bolt action rifle. And I guess you would expect that with all of the different things mechanically that are going on and the additional variables that you have. So from this graph, the the results are more or less pretty similar. Uh, 223 actually had a little bit more uh, recoil at portions of the graph here. And I would say that 6.5 and 308 look almost identical and definitely the bare muzzle had the most forces. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, if we look at the bottoming out at the back, again, the bare muzzle had the most, then it looks like the 308, then it looks like the 6.5, then it looks like the 223. So ironically, we saw the order of stack ranking that we saw with the entire recoil event for bolt action, looking just at the rearmost bottoming out, the slamming forces. Kind of interesting. And, and again, there's some timing here that's just a little bit different. Uh, the 223 looks like it was shifted to the right a little bit, which means it happened just a little bit later. 308's in the middle, and then it looks like the 6.5 and the bare muzzle were aligned pretty well over time. Okay, and peak forces here, 223 had the most, then 6.5, then 308. Uh, that's for the first recoil event. They're pretty similar, but what that tells me here is that it probably doesn't really matter on an AR when you go up to that approximately 150 thousandths of clearance. The bare muzzle obviously is a jump up and you can definitely feel that but with an AR, I'm pretty convinced that you're not gonna feel the difference between the 22 cal, the 6.5 cal, and the 30 cal brakes. When we go to impulse, the differences are a little bit uh, more exaggerated here between the brake configs and the bare muzzle config. Again, 223.65 and 308, very, very similar in terms of total recoil impulse. So what did we learn? The first thing that stood out to me was how much more, in terms of percentage, recoil was reduced with the 22250 compared to the AR-15. Now, this is not an apples to apples comparison. We have a much higher performance round with the 22250 that sends the bullet with much higher muzzle velocity compared to the AR-15. We have a very simple locked mechanical system here over the recoil impulse, and we have a much more complicated system with the AR-15 cycle of function. So it's not 
apples to apples comparison, but it is really interesting specifically to look at how much recoil was reduced with the 22250. This has not manifested itself with other calibers and cartridges that we've tested. So pretty notable there. Uh, also, you can run an oversized break without much or any recoil penalty. And this did surprise me the first time that we did this testing. I was expecting to see kind of what we saw with the 22250 in terms of, you know, smaller clearance, more recoil reduction and going up, but probably a more drastic effect of increased clearance compared to what we've observed throughout multiple rounds now here of testing. The caliber difference here made almost no difference. That was true with the AR-15, that was true with the Bolt Action 22250. And going back to another story I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we've done this before and it was a different type of experiment. It was just a bolt action rifle. I think we were testing 6.5 Creedmoor, if, if memory serves me correctly. We stepped up in bullet clearance from 10 thousandths of an inch to 200 thousandths of an inch. And as you can see here, the dotted line is the bare muzzle and all of the other colors are the different clearance values. We saw a notable step up between 0.1 inches clearance and 0.2 inches clearance. But even still, if you just stand back and give this the squint test, they're pretty dang similar. And that was something that I completely did not expect. So there's round two of muzzle brake clearance testing. We are still believers that the clearance does not have a huge effect on recoil. But what about accuracy and precision? Like I said, that is gonna be an experiment for a future date. What I'd like to know is what do you think and what have you observed with regard to muzzle brake clearance? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. These Ultradyne brakes are really great. I'll have to mention that in our 22 cal brake shootout and in our 30 cal brake shootout, the Apollo Max from Ultradyne won in both cases for the most recoil reduction. Really, really good stuff. Uh, they're also self-timing with the included jam nut. Uh, they're just a really, really good setup. So again, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. We've had a ton of fun with this series and we're gonna have a lot more recoil data to investigate a lot of different things, including bullet weights, different cartridges, uh, different compositions and designs for butt pads. Lots of really good stuff, so stay tuned. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.